Hey guys, this is uh, my video on basically how I did my uh, 66 C10 uh, 5 lug power disc brake disc conversion on my truck. Uh, I did the uh, 73 to 87 parts switch. I didn't use the whole subframe, just the parts, uh, and I'm listing all the parts that I used here on these screens. Um, as I was recording the video, I didn't really put what parts I was using in there. I was just showing you what I had accomplished. Um, so uh, here's all the parts I used. You'll see how I went through it. Uh, hopefully I've listed everything in here for you. Uh, This really isn't part of the uh, disc brake upgrade, um, but if your truck is like mine, it's it's wore out as crap underneath, and I would highly recommend the U-bolt uh, conversion kit. And so it begins. Here's my pile of parts. Here's how far I've gotten so far. I got the CPP booster in and everything. That's ready to go. Now, it's onto these. Yank these off and put the discs on. Let the F bombs drop. Okay, here we are. It's getting late in the afternoon. Uh, and this is what we, we have how far we've gotten. I uh, got all the got all the ball joints out. Lower ball joint did not fit quite properly. Ended up having to use some of this as shim material. It actually went up in there, but it didn't have enough bite. Uh, I believe the holes just watered out a little bit because the other side worked just fine. Uh, so I had to put the shim on that press it in it seems to be doing okay um, there's the driver's side one since we had to take it out um, we had to take it out because the um, the cap for the lower lower control arm bushing the bushing had come out and it ate up the actual end cap so I got two two new arms ordered so they're going to be completely replaced um, right here I can get this off right quickly well, it's, there. as you can see right there there's the shim material I left it up like that so I could paint and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to straight clean this up a little bit and you know, cut a little bit of it off make it nice and pretty so the 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 dust dust seal will go on it but i figured while i had it out i throw a little paint on it ain't perfect but it's clean look better than it was the other side uh ending up with the same thing uh i gotta clean a lot of dirt there was these big clobs of dirt in there i was on both sides so gotta clean them out I'm gonna replace the lower control arm, that shaft, on this side, waiting for them to come in tomorrow morning. Uh, the shocks look to be, they look rough, but they're actually, they seem to be pretty good. Uh, as soon as I get those t parts tomorrow, I'll put everything back together. Um, I'll have everything done tomorrow, hopefully, except for running the lines. Um, as you can see, we've already got the booster in. But I'm going to tell you what right now. CPP says that you can use two of the factory bolt holes or bolts and then drill two more. No. Didn't work out that way. What I ended up doing was holding the, uh, the booster in place, kind of look where it, like it needed to be. And then I scratched little marks on the back. And then I took the brackets off of the back 
of the booster itself, lined them up with the scratches I made, and then marked where I needed all four of my holes, drilled new holes, put bolts in there, uh, but before I put it on, the factory holes, I filled all those up with caulk so it wouldn't come through every time it rained. So, um, basically that's where I'm at right now. And you can see in here, it's, it's getting close. So, I'll update you tomorrow on it. Okay, in between the rainstorms, I'm going to try to get a little bit of work done on this thing today. Uh, we're going to try to put the other new lower control arm bar in our lower control arm. This thing was a fight on this end yesterday because the end cap that was on these things would not come out of here. I cut, it took me half a day to get it out. I had to literally cut it into little pieces to get the darn thing out of there. The, I'm not sure about the threads in these things. The threads actually look more like just grooves than threads, even the good ones. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these end caps off of here and start them in here, make sure that they're gonna work um, before I try to assemble the whole thing. So that's what I'm doing right now in between little bouts of rain that we're getting here so wish me luck well the rain's let up for a little while so I need to get back to work on this uh, this is the one that I thought had pressed in decently uh, it took a little pressure to press in but it, all the beating and pounding and banging trying to get the uh, bushing out knocked this back out well not all the way I had to tap it out but as you can see, I could tap that in there with a hammer just by a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna probably gonna, I'm going to uh, set that up and uh, um, uh, I'll use some more of this for some shim material. So time to get on that. Okay, starting of day four. As you can see, it is in. Um, all the beating and banging, like I said before, that um, lower ball joint came out. I used the shim material again and uh, got, got it put back in there. It's nice and tight now. Now, my, I have a little issue here. I was not able to tighten these all the way to the very end on either side. I believe that is, part, in part, is it is a made in China part as opposed to the Moog good one. It was 28 bucks a piece at O'Reilly's for these. When I took it apart, you know, out of the box, the threads were very, very tight. So adjusting it and getting it back and forth aligned up right was a pain in the butt. Plus, the threads in this lower control arm were about shot uh, due to all the abuse. I believe this is this is the last time anybody will ever use these lower control arms because of all the hell they've been through. This hole is wallowed out. Uh, those threads are shot. So next time anything has to be done on it pretty much needs a new lower control arm. It'll work this time around but never again. So my next project here is getting the top one out, get the top ball joint out of there, get the ground out. Um, and get um, get this lower this uh, uh, tie rod end redone here. Um, hopefully I can, the rain will hold off long enough where I can get that done and we'll be good. I'll get it wrapped up. Then probably my next day off, Wednesday and Thursday, I'll do the lines. All right, well, until next time. Well, here's where we're at so far today. As you can see, I've got this in. Uh, had to replace the, uh, the whole bar 
for the lower control arm bushings because they were all ate up. Um, problem I had was nobody could get the little U-bolts. Uh, so I had to make do. Um, these are a lot beefier than the little U-bolts. Uh, they're in there good and tight. And uh, basically what it is, it's a it's a, a trailer shackle set that I got from uh, Tractor Supply Company. Uh, drilled the holes out a little bit bigger on the frame there and put some big heavy bolts in. Those are uh, 7 16 bolts, um, which is about... <laughs> uh, substantially bigger than the little u-bolts that were holding it in so i think this will be a, a pretty good upgrade uh we've got our this brake set up on now that's the caliper's a little rusty because it's been sitting in storage for a while that's what it does when it sits in box and we put on our new um, shock mount bolt the other one was loose and watered out and everything so we got a nice new tight one in there and now I gotta go work on the other side. Hopefully I'll get that done today. And if we don't have any storms tomorrow, then I'll work on it tomorrow. See you later. Well, it's the end of day four and she's back down on the ground. Um, it's all done except for a little bit of alignment and running the brake lines. Speaking of brake lines, the way that the 75 brake lines were set on for the calipers, they wanted to, they just naturally wanted to lay towards the front of the car, so I wasn't going to fight it. So I'm running a hole through the frame uh, where it goes and making it go through the frame. I'll attach there, and I'll either run under the front of the engine along the cross member and up to the uh, the booster master cylinder or I will run back through the frame and behind the motor and get that all hooked up yeah yeah it's, it's messy in here it's dirty it cleans up good so pay no attention to the dirt and stuff um, some of the things that I ran into problems with were it wasn't really a problem, but it was a, a misunderstanding on my part was our little adjuster, adapters right here for the tie rod ends. What you have to do uh, to get these to work is you have to use a new outer tie rod end as your inner tie rod end because of the direction of the threads. I did not read those instructions on the website, and it's because it's down towards the bottom. And I said several little words, swore they were no good, and, but they turned out to be okay. Um, so, like I said, this is the end of day four. Got to clean up all my stuff, of course. But as you can see, we are five lug. Uh, and I changed out my um, my uh, um, what was the shock absorber mount on the driver's side. It's a little hard to get to because of the um, because of the headers on this side. So I haven't done it yet, and I will do it. But I haven't put the shock absorbers in because I wanted those out in case I was gonna run my brake lines along the back, which make things a little easier. Huh. Wants to zoom in on its own. That's not, not me doing that. Um, like I said before, some of the other things that I ran into, if you're doing this on your own, and this is an old truck that you're just starting on, I would count on problems with your control arms. Um, uh, bushing, they're not really bushings. There's, 
the lower control arms and the upper control arms are their threads and they bounce up they go up they twist in and out of the threads the only rubber that's on the darn thing is basically kind of a grease seal um, so those things tend to wear out and wear out the end caps and you can't really buy the end caps like at AutoZone or something like that you'd have to spe you got to special order them um, you, but mine on the passenger side uh, due to though due to that issue is probably the, this is the last time anybody will ever be able to use that lower control arm because I don't think you can redo it again. Um, both of them, the the hole for the lower ball joint, I'm assuming was worn uh, because you could basically almost press the thing in there by hand. Not quite. It took a little hammer pounding to get in there. Uh, and I ended up having to use a little piece of sheet metal, very thin sheet metal, as some shim stock, and it really went in there pre pretty good and tight. But I think that's just being, you know, 50 some odd years old on this truck, and just needed a little help. Uh, but it's it's about wore out. Um, you can get new ones, but if you're gonna if you're gonna get new lower control arms might as well just go ahead and get tubular ones and tubular ones on the top too while you're at it I mean it, they're better for it uh, I haven't looked at the new tubular arms on the lowers to see if they have the mounting holes for the factory sway bar which this one does and I'm going to put on there um, it's, there's just two, two little holes on the front it doesn't have an end link uh, basically the bar bolts to the lower control arm uh, with a bushing and then you have two brackets on the frame um, like I said it's dirty under there right now because I've been grinding and dust and dirt flying everywhere um, underneath the truck I was using a pressure washer to wash away dirt and grease as I went and a lot of that stuff just kind of right up and settled on the top of everything up here so I need to wash all this and clean it up real good because it does look a little poopy um, so I'm off again Wednesday and Thursday and that's when I will probably try to finish my brakes hopefully I, I, I'll run those brake lines get everything bled uh, and have a good couple you know a couple of test runs on it get some time behind the wheel and we'll be taking it to Somerset for the Summer Nights Cruise Truck Nationals on uh, the 22nd, which is this coming Saturday. So if I'll, I'll be going there anyway, at least with the 48 GMC, possibly with this. So, you know, if you guys are any of y'all going to Somerset next Saturday, or this coming Saturday, see y'all there. Take you to the graveyard where we sit and make out.